by popular request. We have Amazonian once again. So, what we did is we gave Amazonian our Thran's Pizza Party. Now, why do we call it Thran's Pizza Party? It's because that's what chat voted on. I don't know why, still don't know why, but that's just kind of what it is. So, that's what we're going with. Uh, she made a lot of changes with it. Unfortunately, I don't really agree with the changes, but again, that is her choice. That's why we're giving it to other streamers so that we get their input and their ideas of why they make specific changes on what specific cards. Um, so if you don't know who Amazonian is, uh, I mean, she's really, really nice. She's a fantastic streamer, very good at explaining everything. Um, going through her thought process, uh, an amazing limited player, a brawl player. Um, yeah, I mean, she's also also a fellow jank master. Uh, it's definitely make sure to check out all of her links will be down below in the description. So definitely check her out. So this is the deck that we sent over to Amazonian. Um, it is a Karuga companion deck, which is pretty slow in the current meta. If you're not on the play, you usually will most likely always lose to aggro. Um, so the way Karuga reads is that uh, your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana cost three or greater and land cards. Um, so our cheapest cards are going to be Deafening Clarion for a board wipe and then Blood Sun for additional ramp and a card draw. Um, the ramp that it offers us is the Lotus Field. So when Lotus Field comes into play, it, it'll come into play tapped and you have to sacrifice two lands, um, but it also has Hexproof, and it taps for three mana instead of one. The reason why Blood Sun is really good for that is that um, it draws a card when it enters Battlefield, but it also makes it to where it's not Hexproof, which sucks, but it comes into play untapped, and you don't have to sacrifice two other lands for it. So it's just an untapped three mana card, or three mana um, land. It's just an amazing combo. It's still one of my favorites. Uh, it's starting to annoy me a little bit more and more as the more I play it. Uh, so it may show up a little bit less frequently in my videos. Um, we also have Shadow of the Sky for uh, board wipes early on just because it's necessary. Uh, we have Karn the Great Creator. This is just to get some stuff out of sideboard uh, just to give us answers to the various different decks. Since it is a best of one deck, uh, you just need answers to the various... Like, I mean, it goes all the way from aggro to mid-range to control to, like, combo to random jank. Never really know. Uh, so this just really helps with an extra toolbox in the sideboard. Now, the biggest part of this is Thran's Temporal Gateway. Thran's Temporal Gateway, um, you have four mana tap. You may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Historic cards are any artifact... Um, any legendary, so uh, Planeswalker, I think it's any legendary creature, uh, any legendary anything, as, as I think. I could be wrong, but it's at least Planeswalkers, Artifacts, and Sagas. I'm pretty sure it's legendary everything, but correct me if I'm wrong in the, the description below. So the reason we do this is for the Sagas. We basically want to be able to flash in Elspeth Conquers Death, so we can do this at the end of their turn. We exile something that they play. We can, at the end of their turn, follow the Thran. Um, we can, end of the turn, Cure Best of the Sea Gods, which is probably one of my favorite things to do right now. Cure Best of the Sea Gods is just an amazing card. I'm, like, a big fan of it. It's probably my favorite card right now, like, hands down. So when it comes into play, you create an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token with hexproof it looks like a fucking lobster but apparently it's a kraken i don't know if krakens are supposed to look like that but it looks like a lobster but whatever uh on the second turn so basically at the end of their turn you can flash us in and create an 8-8 kraken and then at the beginning of your turn you tap all of their non-land permanents which is crazy because all of a sudden now you have an uncontested 8-8 kraken which is kind of insane so you will swing in at 10. Usually you'll hit a Planeswalker if they have two. A lot of times you'll go face or you'll keep it back as a blocker. Uh, the next turn, since none of their creatures untap, the next turn we get to gain control of target permanent 
an opponent controls and untap it. So a lot of times we'll get like a big Planeswalker, Ugin, or a big creature, or an enchantment or something, maybe lands, and we can get really whatever we want from it. Uh, but it's really cool, I like it a lot. Now you couple that with Cavalier of Dawn, and then things become a little bit more interesting. So Cavalier of Dawn, uh, when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. You can blow up your own stuff if you want to, like if you have duplicate uh, Blood Suns, if you have more than one Blood Sun, you can blow up one of them. Uh, and then it'll give you a 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. So whoever owns the permanent that you blow up, they get a 3-3 three, three golem, uh, which is nice because you can target any non-land permanent. It's actually really good. Uh, when the Cavalier of Dawn dies, you may return an artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is really good in conjunction with the sagas that end up going away. So if we have Cavalier of Dawn in the graveyard, we Elspeth Conquers death something. When it goes into the graveyard, we bring back Cavalier of Dawn. We blow something up. They end up killing the Cavalier of Dawn. We bring back our Elspeth Conquers death in our hand. And then we exile something else, and then when that cycles through, we bring back Cavalier of Dawn, and you just go over and over and over again. It's a really nice infinite loop, or infinite loop. Um, Follow the Thran, this is just something to where we can destroy all lands, and then each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. This is fantastic when you have Blood Sun out, um, and a lot of times when you also have Lotus Fields. So you'll destroy all lands, Lotus Fields will go into the graveyard, and then at your next turn, you can put in like two Lotus Fields into play. So all of a sudden, you just have six mana after you destroyed all of the lands. It's freaking awesome. Uh, outside of that, I mean, we have Ugin uh, for the high, high, high top end. Uh, this is just the Big Mac Daddy, eight colorless mana for seven loyalty as a plus two. Ugin the Spirit Dragon deals 3 damage to any target. Um, and then the minus X is exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That has one or more colors. So that's pretty important. Um, so it won't get rid of our Karns. It won't get rid of our Thran's Temporal Gateway. But it will get rid of our Cavalier of Dawn or Elspeth Conqueror's Death. All the Thran, Kiorba, Sea Gods. So we want to really try to keep it about 4 mana or less if we can. It sucks that Blood Sun goes away, but usually by the time we have 8 mana to play it, we've already gotten a lot of our value from Blood Sun, so it's not a big deal. Um, so for the sideboard that we get from Karn, we have Tormod's Crypt. This is basically so that we can exile their graveyard after we um, destroy all their lands with Fall of the Thran. We have Gravedigger's Cage. This is just so that they can't play any creatures from their graveyard or their library. Uh, we have Glass Casket. This is just against aggro. We need to exile something. Uh, Sorcerer Spyglass. This is just if we want to prevent something from having an activated ability. Usually we'll use it on a Planeswalker. Uh, Crucible of Worlds. This is just kind of there as a filler. I almost never get this. Very, very rarely. I actually don't even remember the last time I got this. Um, but you put it into play, and then you can eventually just start playing lands from your graveyard, which is fine. Helm of the Host, we use this in conjunction with God Pharaoh Statue. Uh, so God Pharaoh Statue spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast. And then at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. Helm of the Host, at the beginning of your combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature... Um, except the token isn't legendary if the equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste. So God Pharaoh Statue, obviously it's just an artifact, it's a little inconspicuous, but Karn is plus one is until the end of until end of next turn, up to one target non-creature artifact becomes an artifact creature with the power and toughness, each equal to its converted mana cost. So basically we turn God Pharaoh Statue into 6-6. Six, six, we equip Helm of the Host to it, and then we make a second God Pharaoh statue. The second one is not a creature, so you have to keep that in mind. Um, but then, their, the mana on all spells that they cast go up by four colorless instead of just two. Then the next turn, put another two on, then all their stuff costs six more, and it just multiplies every single time, so it sucks. Um, 
we have two meteor golems this is just great again you can blow up any non-basic land or any sorry any non-land permanent this also works very well with helm of the host because at the very beginning of your combat phase you get to copy meteor golem and destroy something um, this one also with these tokens will have haste so you can swing in it's only three damage but you can do it. Uh, platinum angel this is just in case you really need to survive uh, although at the times that I've gotten this, it is done fuck all. I haven't been able to do anything with it. Uh, the magic mirror, this is just kind of a meme. Doesn't really do anything. Um, but you have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror and draw a card for each knowledge counter on the mirror. Um, I mean, it's nice for card draw, I guess, but I don't know how frequently i would ever actually use this i've never used it still a stone coil serpent uh this is amazing just because it has protection from multicolored so it can't get bounced by teferi it can't get uh, it doesn't take damage from clarion so if we uh, have that out and then we deafening clarion it won't do damage to it we'll actually be able to swing in with it with lifelink which is also very good um Overall, it's just a very, very good creature. But that's the deck. It's called Thrans Pizza Party. Let's see how Amazonian does. Excellent! So this is now a video I'm recording for Strider Stone. Strider Stone sent me a deck list um, called Thrans Pizza Party, which I messed around with a little bit, changing the mana base and some of the cards in it uh, just to be a little bit stronger against aggro. This deck is... It's a cheat card deck deck. It uses Thrawn's Temporal Gateway to cheat out things like Ugin, Cure Best the Sea Gods, Elspeth Conquers Death, so you don't necessarily need the right mana for it, and you can do it at instant speed. Instantaneously! Have fun. Yeah, you get to cheat out historic cards. You can even cheat out historic cards like Teferi or the Birth of Miletus if you really want to play, pay for mana to play this at instant speed. You know what? You can. It gets around counter spells. Only three Teferi? Yeah, you don't need that many of them. Lots of board wipes in here. Keep yourself alive. And then the Wombo Combo, Fall of the Thran, combined with Tormod's Crypt. So you use Karn, the great creator, to get Tormod script off the sideboard. You fall of the Thran, wipe the board, and then uh, deny your opponent getting anything back by exiling their graveyard. This is a historic death list. Yes, it is. You can cheat out to fairy on your opponent's turn. Yes. It denies you activating him once, but you can still have fun with it. Oh no, uh, this picture is being stretched very unfortunately. Rin, your, your neck got way too long. So I'm going to uh, just like first demo the deck in historic ranks, and then I'm going to take it into a event where we're going to see how many wins and losses we can get to. It's a llama dog, only 14 sideboard cards. Yes, that's because it originally was Karuga as a sideboard again. She was the companion to the deck, but I removed Karuga because I felt that things like Glass Casket were just invaluable in the queue. I also made a major change to Strider Stone's list. I know this barely makes it his. This is now my terrible list. Um, I removed Lotus Field and Blood Sun because I find that it's just not necessary in, in the queue. I find that there's not as many Field of the Deads as you would expect or search for his cantas, or anything of the sort. Ah, there's a wild growth walker. And now there isn't a wild growth walker. Wild growth walker is pretty much a telltale sign that our opponent's playing in explore deck. Wild growth walker is enemy to aggro. This one three for two that gains three life every time a creature explores. Lotus Field kept showing up when I didn't want it. Oh, Golgari Locket. Okay, interesting. And I did not hit a fourth land, so I did not get to play Karn. The walker is in a fox box. It's a fox in a box. There's an explorer. 
Paradise Druid on top or in the graveyard? In the graveyard. In Paradise Druid! Okay, so that sets up nicely enough for Deafening Clarion here. Just hit both modes because we can. And next turn I will be able to play Karn! Or I guess Shattered the Sky, but I don't know why I would. Light Ranger. More Explorators. Really glad I got rid of Wild Growth Walker. I'm actually going to... Hmm. I'm thinking about another Glass Gasket. Oh, let's grab that Tormod script. I can put it onto the battlefield now. Not that it makes much of a difference. Is my shirt from the band the XX? No, this is actually a Dos Equis shirt. They're a beer company. They're a Mexican beer company owned by Heineken. What is this land gonna do? They could play something scary this turn, if they had, like, a Garuk. If I get two more mana, we can have fun! I don't normally stream, but when I do, I stream Magic the Gathering. I'm the least interesting girl in the world. That's not true. Would the least interesting girl in the world put a fox in a box? Covered in locks? Hmm. I might actually just want to hit this here. Nah, I can just shatter if they replay stuff. Do it. Play them. Play them so I may wipe this board. Another fine finality. Okay. Oh, into the graveyard. And Paradise Druid. She's holding a mox. Mm. I actually stay alive and I don't need Karn for anything else. I think I'm just going to Birth of Melitis, get myself a Plains. I've got a second Karn here. I don't feel I need to board wipe. I can kill a creature. Not gonna animate anything. <laughs> can I animate their artifacts? I, I could turn their Golgari Locket into a creature and then board wipe. <gasps> oh, Adam, they were they were making a joke about. Uh, the Dos Equis ad campaign with the most interesting man in the world. Was Green Eggs and Ham written as a dare? I did not know that. I love Dr. Seuss, though. Oh, that's an Ugin. Okay, uh, that's rough. You should just minus... minus three, you'll get this back. See? It's perfect. This doesn't get exiled, because it's colorless. Neither does this. We just plus and kill Karn. Oof. <sighs> That's an Ugin? That's rough, buddy. <laughs> oh, right, I have this. I will fall of the Thran next turn. After we take care of this board state. I get to bring back Karn. The smallest streamers are the ones that don't stream at all. And we love and respect them anyway. Just 
just about ready to shatter the sky. Followed by a fall of the Thran. Watch them have a Command the Dreadhorde in hand. That would actually be pretty rough. The sky is falling! The sky is falling! Chicken Lethal. What do you know of fallen skies? Okay, they've drawn cards. They have tons of lands on the battlefield. Lots of tasty stuff in the grave. Paradise Druid, I don't mind you having Surviving Fall of the Thran, even though it is a mana source. Fall last turn would be bad. Yep, because they would have kept all their creatures. Why play the planes when I Thran next turn? Because I forgot. <laughs> Give you an extra loyalty. Go ahead and remove all of existence. You and this chicken licking. I think a lot of the world learns it as chicken licking. Um, defend myself by animating the glass casket. I don't feel I need to. Let's go ahead and grab some stuff. Be able to use that next turn. Oh, look, a land! So we're gonna bring back a plains and uh, a shock land, which I'm going to play the shock cost for. Uh, interestingly enough, when you return lands with Fall of the Thran, uh, if you try to bring back a check land and you do not have the criteria at the time it would enter the battlefield, even if it would meet it here, like if I brought back a check land and hollowed fountain or check land in the plains, it still would come in the way you don't want it to. Want to add a Parhelion too? Because you can cheat it in and animate it. That is pretty fun. Could definitely put one on the sideboard pretty harmlessly. What fun do I want? This fun? This fun. Now I can bring those back. I can animate this! Become a man! God Pharaoh's statue! What is a man? This is a man. Bipedal. Featherless. Checks out, right? I can delete their one land, but I, I really don't think I need to. Cool. All right, let's take this into an event. And now, historic event. It's got a cat on it. I have one more sideboard spot. All right, we'll fill up the spot, the sideboard spot. We're gonna put in the Parhelion, cause we can. Where are you? Temporal pizza party. Parhelion. And we have to go here. Let's show the sideboard. Parhelion two, perfect. It's in. The secret sauce has been administrator. We get up to three losses. Cool. Let's make it happen. Once submitted, your deck cannot be changed. Submit! You need a turtle for a pizza party? 
We once made a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles deck, but all it was was using different arcane adaptations to change every card in my deck to be a ninja and a turtle. There's no teenage as a creature type, but there is mutant and ninja and turtle, so we put mutant ninja turtle on every one of our cards. All right, we've got this jerk and this jerk. It bothers you that the historic event background is a card that's legal and standard? Yes, it is. Behold my steam vents. Nice that we got to go first in this game. <gasps> White, Soul Warden, it's a life gain deck. Okay, it's a life gain deck that we're just gonna have to the, wipe the board with. It's time for Kitten. Is it tied for Pride Mate? Ah, so you're saying we should just do Goats. W wait a minute. Why would you... Oh, let's not question it. Thank you for playing Hushbringer into your Soul Warden so you didn't gain life. Thanks for shutting off your own card. Resplendent Angel. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, return from whence you came. I probably shouldn't have played the land first there, in case I drew a check land here. Didn't anyway. Cool, rewarded. It's a fairy. Time walk this nerd. <gasps> Speaker of the heavens. Oh, heavens. So I'm just going to plus and sit on my two different kind of board wipes here. Ah, so they played Daxos first. Let Daxos enter the battlefield. A Clarion still wipes this board. Wait until they attack. Boop, boop. Everybody dies! But they do gain two life. What's the deck name for this? Uh, this is Temporal Pizza Party, or, um, Thran's Pizza Party. That is the original name that Strider Stone had given to the deck. So we are now at one win! We, we didn't do the thing. We didn't eat the lands, but... In a, in a way, we, we still ate their lands by winning the game. An immediate scoop. There it is! It's a sweep, 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 sweep deck. It's, yeah, we're full of board wipes because we're trying to do something obnoxious that unfortunately is very easy to stop otherwise. Okay, I've got a Triome, Mr. Steppy, Clarion. It's good enough to me. Get to Lava Runner. All right, so this is either a mono red deck and we are on the draw, or this is a wizard deck. Looks like it's just pure mono red. There's gonna be a lot of burn in my in my future. Yep, as demonstrated. Can you feel the burn? I definitely can't feel the sunshine. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna take a turn here with Birth of Rather than um, shocking in a land to play Bone Crusher Giant, playing talking to land, Definite Clarion, or just letting a land come in untapped and stepping. I felt that it was safe enough to do, and hopefully I was right. Uh, this thing being a wizard actually means I'm rewarded for taking it out now. So I'm going to take it out now, even though they can't attack through this wall. Now, unfortunately, mono red decks don't really care about having their land destroyed, because almost all their spells cost one or two mana. And a shock, and I'm at two. And another shock, we're dead. So, that's 
uh, that's Red Deck doing what Red Deck do. Winning! Lifelink on Giant could help win. Yeah, I would need the Giant down and I'd need to be able to give it Lifelink and then swing in. Ain't happening. So one win, one loss with the Temporal Pizza Party. Oh, fun and interactive. You know, that's what standard burn decks looked like before last year's rotation with Goblin Chain Whirler, uh, Yoshino Pyromancer just going pew, pew, pew. It hurt. The opponent never didn't have it. Yeah, they just burn your face. Ronomop Ruins. It was banned when it was in standard, though. Ronomop Ruins. I'm not talking about Hazaret Red. I'm talking about post Hazaret. During Dominaria being out, before that stuff rotated. You forgot about Hazaret? How could you forget about Hazaret Ray? She's my, she's my girl. Mono Red before Last Rotation was your first experience playing Magic, and you were like, is it always this burn? So I'm gonna lead with Glacial Fortress because I don't have a way to have it come in untapped, and my spells, I can just cast off this. If I need to Steppy, I'll be able to. The Wizards burn. Yeah, the, the type that's got the Wizzies that burn. Yeah, you can just bring a standard deck into into this format. But there's no reason to bring your standard deck when you can just tune it up for historic. Because there's also a, a standard event. All right, so I'm going to just burn them because I'm planning on playing this next turn. Get my Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, if we go up against a non-creature deck, this can feel like a bit of a bummer. Hazard the Fervent is wonderful. Oh, you had the invocation style for Hazaret? I'm kind of jealous. She's the best. Though I didn't love the Amonkhet invocations just because they were fairly illegible. You're totally right about that. Ilharg is secretly Hazaret? No, he is not. He is his own big pig. Though he was part of that god cycle for whatever reason. The only one that's not a zombie. Because Hazaret appeared in the story, just not on Ravnica itself. Okay, there's another Uro. Leg. Can you tutor Thrawn with Karn? Uh, if I remembered to put one into the sideboard. She's busy rebuilding him on Cat. Yep. Oh, somebody countered your Banefire purely to gain three life. Yeah, that's one of those tricky things about the old can't be countereds. That's minus. Yeah, it looks like, um... Looks like it's not here. Alright, that's fine. I'm gonna grab the, uh, Tormod's Crypt. Play it. Siege Rhino standard. Siege Rhino doesn't even seem as scary when you compare it to so many modern cards. I do love Siege Rhino, though. That's really good. I wonder how Siege Rhino would be handled in this standard. Love that I didn't know. Didn't know what. They don't have enough cards in Graveyard to escape an Uro. But if they did, I'd stop them. Okay, they're shattering the sky. I get to draw a card. Cool. They can escape one of these if they put one more card in the graveyard. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab another artifact off the sideboard, and this one's gonna be Grafter's Cage. Also known as, I don't have to pop this. I just have to chill. Oh, you didn't know that I didn't have the Thran and sideboard? Uh, this isn't my deck. This is a deck I modified, but it is not, not an original Amy build. There should have been one copy of uh, Temporal Gateway in the sideboard. That's probably what I accidentally messed up with. Okay, so there's a Hydroid Crisis, drawing them two cards, being a 5-5. Five, five. It's gonna go to jail. Hey, this thing showed up. I wish I had a land. I know I'm denying myself the Ugin next turn. He, get him. <laughs> Thrawn's not an artifact? Yes, it is. Is it an enchantment? I could have sworn it was an artifact. Uh. Okay, there's two different things called Thran. We're talking about Thran's Temporal Gateway, legendary artifact. The chat seems to be talking about Fall of the Thran. Yeah, they're talking about the wrong card. Okay. Um. Oh, man, this sucks. Okay. We gotta get our own Ugin out. One more land. Party hard. It's almost pizza time. Pizza time. Yeah, ideally, I actually need Elspeth Conquer's death. Please don't bounce my gateway. Bounce my glass casket. No, 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 no. I need this for stuff, probably. What a bummer. Can't even get out Ugin to start a slap fight with them. So this Ugin's gonna ult. Um, Fall to Thran should also destroy Planeswalkers. Fight me if you disagree. I think everything should destroy Planeswalkers though. Huh. I see. They didn't bother ulting. Um. <laughs> Deck does not need two Eldest Reborn. We are both not in those colors, nor do I think it would make a major difference. It would be it would be fun though to like add black and as a color. Hey, okay, what that sweet cast trigger? Well, they could have done both. And we die. I'm sorry, Strider, but sometimes the fairies happen. Hey, get him! This way has me dead next turn. I could have been dead the other turn anyway. I got mana screwed. I got to five when I needed four. But then they just kept getting rid of the thing I needed. Ulamog is in historic. This Ulamog, the ceaseless hunger, is in historic. Ulamog, him who a nasty boy. All right, so we're at one win, two losses. Let's try again. I feel like Infinite Gyre. Infinite Gyre, I think, is a better and scarier card, but I think that's part of why it's not in Historic, because I think it would be 
too dominant. The infinite gyres got annihilated, right? Yeah. Uh, annihilator sounds really dangerous to me to have in arena at all. No annihilator. I say as a monster who plays Ulamog's Crusher in like every casual EDH deck, like, yeah, it's fine. It's just got Annihilator. What's wrong with Annihilator? Yeah, the format being called Historic while there was a type called Historic got to a lot of people. Ooh, okay, it's Gruel time. They're gonna take me to Gruel Old School. I'm gonna eat those, eat those cards back into their hand. I'm pretty much just going to uh, stall a little while I have this clarion in hand, try to get them to commit more to the board. Okay, uh, as a 4-4, four, four, not a 3-3, three, three, means it does not die to the clarion. But I also don't really care about Teferi dying next turn. I don't feel I need to clarion at instant speed. I'd rather get this out. Just in case, I don't know, I draw Ugin next turn. Oh, Questing Beast! Okay, so they, they had a way to kill Teferi no matter what. More damage is coming to my face. I'm going to prevent to keep this alive. For just a little bit. Just a little bit. And I don't really have any artifacts that would swing this battle here. We're going to destroy the Burning Tree Emissary and then be kind of sad. I could use Karn by playing him from my hand to animate this and turn it into a 4-4. That can trade with the Questing Beast. That's not a great play, but it's what I have. Please, no Ember Queen. Oh no. Karn Tutor can't help. What would Karn Tutor for? Well. I could delete all lands. That's something. So I'm just gonna cast Karn here. Cost the same either way. And yeah, I'll show you what we have um, that can do nothing. This doesn't help, this doesn't help, this doesn't help. This helps very little because it can't block Questing Beast and Trample goes through, goes through it. Um, Spyglass, Mirror, Glass Casket can hit one of those, but it doesn't save us. We wouldn't have been able to Karn and cast this. And with them having Ember Cleave, it's kind of a... Did deal anyway. If we had gotten one of our shatters, that would have helped, but we didn't. And we lose. What a bummer. Well, I got to show off the deck, so hopefully these last 30 minutes have been nice and showing you a little bit of fun. And I got rewards! I got a sleek schooner. So sleek. So scoony. Great stage, Swarm Build Mage. Nice. And I will end the recording. This is going to be the deck comparison uh, between what I gave Amazonian and what she changed. So the deck on the left is the one that I made. The deck on the right is what she changed it to. And she changed a fuckload. So she ended up uh, taking out Karuga so it wasn't the companion. And she added two glass caskets in main board. Uh, so glass casket, whenever it enters battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with so converted mana cost three or less until glass casket leaves the battlefield. This is a very good card. I do like it. Um, as far as putting it in, it's pretty much fine. I didn't really have a reason to have Karuga as a companion at all. It was just kind of a, and eh, what else are we going to do with the slots type thing. Uh, we have Birth of Miletus is what she added as well. Uh, this gives a blocker, gives a little bit of life, it helps you find a planes. So it's a lot of good stuff. She added three Bone Crusher Giants. This also is a little bit early 
uh, creature removal. Same thing as Glass Caskin, but it also comes in as a 4-3 for 3 mana, which is very, very powerful. Um, so it does a lot of blocking. It's good against Questing Beast. No Questing Beast will still get a little bit damaged through. It's still very good. Uh, we have Tefri Time Raveler. She also added that, which is Tefri. Everyone knows what Tefri does at this point in time. It's a pain in the ass. I don't agree with that change, but you know. Um, I took out one of the Deafening Clarions, added two Settle the Wreckages, which is also weird to me. Um, she took out one of the Shatters, and I assume taking out one Clarion and one Shatter to add in two Settle the Wreckages. I think that's what she did. Um, she also took out one of the Karns. Um, and again, I'm assuming that is to kind of fit in with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards that she added. So she took out four of the Blood Suns, uh, one of the Clarions, one of the Shatters. Then one of the Karns. And let's see. One of the Elspeth Conqueror's Death she took out. She took out both Cavalier of Dawns. She took out one Cure Best of the Sea Gods. Yeah, it's like a completely different deck. Basically. So she changed 11 cards. Yeah, and then added two Blood Suns. Or, sorry, added two Settle the Wreckages. Um, added three Tefries. Added three Bone Crusher Giants. Added three Miletus. And two Glass Caskets. So I missed something. I miscounted somewhere along the lines, but it was a very, it's a very odd change. She did a lot of changes, and obviously with the mana base, she had to add a lot of planes in main board because of the Birth of Miletus. You don't have any planes, and you cast Birth of Miletus, it kind of feels bad because you don't get to get anything from your land. Um, outside of that, I think that's really the only changes. There was nothing made, there's no changes to the sideboard that was made. I don't think so anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing in the sideboard was changed because you can see the sideboard still says 14. Uh, so taking out Karuga, she didn't even add a 15th card in the sideboard. But, I mean, those are the changes she made. It's definitely a completely different deck than what it started out as. Um, but, you know, she didn't do very well. That's probably why. I'm going to blame it on her. I'm blaming it on her. <clears throat> it's not my deck. It's not my deck anymore. Changing 11 cards. It's no longer my deck. I take no blame for that. No blame. Not me. But yeah, again, thank you so much, Amazonian. I don't know if you're going to watch this video, but I really do appreciate it. Um, and I hope to see you on next time. If you haven't already, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. It does help the channel. Uh, we're trying to get monetized on the, on the YouTube channel right now so that I can give a raise to my video editor. So I'm sure he would appreciate it greatly. Um, but yeah, if you have any other decks or other streamers that you want me to donate to, put that in the comment section below. Um, just so that we have a better idea of what you would like to see next. Anyway, later. Yo, what up, YouTube? Yeah, we going here, Strider. Come on. You didn't really think that I was that type of person, did you? Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you were even a little bit entertained by this video, please make sure to let me know down below. And if you have anything that you would like to see next, go ahead and leave that there, too. And make sure to check out my live stream five days a week, every day except Sunday and Thursday. Stream time's down below.